morning everyone and welcome to another Tomcat vlog. It's not a gas video today, it's a vlog. Anyway, as usual with my vlogs, taking the mutt out and it's about quarter past seven in the morning and winter is coming. It's coming to the end of summer. Anyway, what's this video all about? First thing is, the reaction to my reaction video about the comments made by Mr. Carter on my cook control video. The response to it has been absolutely phenomenal and it's been really touching the comments I've received from you guys who watch my videos saying I should take no notice of Mr. Carter is only a troll. Well, the reason I made the video is because he isn't really a troll. He is a lead trainer, assessor, and IQA. An IQA is an internal verifier like internal quality assurance. So uh, getting a comment like that from a guy with that status, he did a video making of it. There was other ways he could have uh, put his point across without actually insulting me. So uh, anyway, Mr. Carter has removed his comments now from the video, but he's not actually made a comment on the video of me reacting to his comments. <laughs> anyway, so I think lessons learned Mr. Carter, hopefully, that one, when you make a comment on a YouTube video, be respectful, even if you don't agree with it. And there are ways of doing that. Oh, just don't say anything at all. I'll make a video saying, this is what Derek and Tomcat's done, but this is what I would do. And it would be good to see that video. So Mr. Carter, if you are watching my videos, which you obviously did, why don't you make a video and show us how you do the controls because guys need trainers to be putting this information out there so they can continue the training once they've left the training center rather than insulting other trainers and uh, shouting them out anyway <laughs> so what else is happening on this video today besides thanks a lot guys it means a lot so i'm going away for the weekend with my lovely wife and i'm gonna to have to swap arms now because my arm's falling off <laughs> i'm doing i'm doing a press-up challenge at the moment and uh my arms well, can't hold up real long <laughs> anyway that's another story. So yeah, what's happening on this video today? Well, we're going away for the weekend. This is uh, another COVID cancelled weekend. We've got booked. It's been booked for at least 12 months. And um, we're going to our mate Jay and Gwen's place, but it's their new place in Bomaris, which is on Anglesey in Wales. But first, for some god known reason, my wife wants to go to. What is it? Farmby Beach? No, not Farmby Beach. Crosby Beach. <laughs> she wants to go to Crosby Beach, which is near Liverpool, and to look at the nude statues on the beach and take the dog for a run because we can't really get into Gwen and Jay's place. I'm just dodging the horse poop. Uh, till later on this afternoon so we're going to go there first and uh, have a run on the beach have a look and see what Crosby Beach has to offer I know there's, um, there's a wind farm off there as well isn't there so it'll be interesting to see that see what it looks like anyway before all that happens though Still got to take her out and uh, 
go take my wife Skip for a wash because she's had a car for a year now and uh, oh looks like Lorraine's coming with her dogs because one of them just nearly run me over uh, take, yeah taking a Skip for a wash because there's Lorraine hello Lorraine hello Lorraine hello. <laughs> he nearly ran into the back of your leg. He did run into the back of my leg. Sorry. That's <laughs> all right. Lorraine, taking the dogs for a walk. Anyway, I need to swap arms again now because the other arm's falling off. Anyway, this introduction is getting very long now. <laughs> so, yeah, go and take the skip. I mean, a car for a walk. First time in a year. And then we'll get packed up. Get over to Crosby Beach and then get over to Bamaris after we've had some lunch. So, as usual, shall we get on with it now? So, shall we have a look at the uh, skip before cleaning? Check the boot out. Oh, not too bad. Bag of clothes, which have been in there for 12 months to go to the charity shop. Uh, it's not as minging as it normally is, but there's something here on the roof. So uh, hopefully when it comes back, it's going to be like a new car again, not like the skip it is. is now a nice sparkly clean car and now no longer a skip even the birdie poo's gone good job car cleaners now let's get over to Crosby Beach which is part of the Merseyside coastline and it's north of Liverpool and it's in the metropolitan borough of Sefton the beach itself is about 2.5 miles long, so let's get over there. So if you want to find some parking, all you've got to do is put in the postcode for the leisure centre and there's loads of free parking here and it's right near the entrance to the beach. 
Crosby Beach is now the permanent home to another place. The sculptures by internationally acclaimed artist Anthony Gormley. The beach has been awarded the Quality Coast Award by Keep Britain Tidy. So once you actually do get onto the beach you're going to be confronted by a load of these cast iron statues. So there are 100 cast iron statues which are modelled on Gormley and they were installed in 2005 at the beach and they spread across 3 kilometres or 2 miles of the foreshore and stretch almost 1 kilometre out to sea. Bit of a problem at the moment, we've got 10 missing because their foundations have collapsed so there is only 90 of them at the moment. So this installation another place was only supposed to last for 16 months in Crosby and the men were almost sent packing early amid safety complaints including cases of the Coast Guard being called out to rescue them because people were thinking they were drowning people. They don't look that real. Now 16 years on the artwork has become a tourist attraction for the Sefton Borough of Merseyside and a beloved local institution. Now as we were walking along the beach we came across this little fella. Now we don't know if this jellyfish had been placed on here or it actually parked itself on top of this statue's head when the tide came in. But strange to see a jellyfish up here. As we look down the beach what you can see down this bottom end is Liverpool docks. As we pan around the landmass you can see in the distance is Wales where we're going next. The sea is the Irish Sea or Liverpool Bay and as we come round now you should be able to see Burbo Bank Offshore Wind Farm which is on Burbo Bank Flats. As we pan round now you can now see all the houses which are on the shoreline. Come out there dear. So what you can see here is the Burbo Bank Offshore Wind Farm. It is a 348 megawatt offshore wind farm located here on Burbo Flats in Liverpool Bay on the west coast of the UK in the Irish Sea. It consists of an original 90 megawatt wind farm commissioned in 2007 and then a 258 megawatt extension was completed in 2017. So this wind farm was developed by Seascape Energy which was then acquired by Dong Energy which is now called Orsted in 2005. Originally a 25 turbine installation was installed using the Siemens wind power. 3.6 megawatt turbines was constructed from 2005 and officially opened in 2007 and then a further 32 8 megawatt turbines were constructed in 2016 and then opened in 2017. You can't come to the seaside without filling your flat face with an ice cream, can you, Mr. Whitby? Mm -mm. Is it just me or does everybody get an ice cream cone with a flake in it? Coffee Beach does good, Mr. Whitby. So now I've eaten my ice cream, let's get from this Crosby Beach over to Bomaris. It's going to take us about two hours to get there, so shall we get on with it then?
let's have a look inside. So as soon as we come through the front door, we're into the kitchen. And a panting dog. Nice old uh, Baxi boiler. Our new Baxi boiler. So nice kitchen. We then come into the living area and the dining area. So we've got a little table. Comfort looking sofa, old dog's already on it. Nice TV. So into the bedroom. Quite a big bed. Nice uh, comfy bed. Little uh, set of drawers and kind of wardrobe-y thing. Towels laid out for us already. And then into the ensuite. Nice big shower. And this is our home for three days. So while we're doing our little evening stroll after dinner, we found the perfect vehicle for Tomcat. Can you see that? She's a bit of a rusty old piece, but how cool would that be if Tom was driving around in that? He'd love it. Get rid of the old Balingo and get one of them. <gasps> Amazing. <laughs> rusty old car left in the middle of a car park. <laughs> and that's the end of our travelling day to Barbaris in Anglesey, Wales. And we've just come down to the sea from dock, quayside, whatever you want to call it. There's a nice little sailing ship there coming back into port. I don't know. So uh, we're just finishing off with a walk on the front after a lovely tea. We've got the castle in the background over there. So uh, yeah, been a good day getting down here. Over to Liverpool first and then finishing up here in Bomaris. So, the end of the first day, I'll catch you tomorrow guys. Hi everyone, and welcome to our first day, our full day, in Bomaris, uh, in Wales, well in Anglesey. So as usual, first thing in the morning, it's mot out time and we're in the um, town green where we were last night so literally the castle is there right behind me Wales is over there and Ireland is over there somewhere and I think I need to stop recording because the dog's done a poo sorry about that but it is uh, dog duty time so uh, good job I brought quite a few bags because it was a double bagger anyway that's uh, not for in the morning is it well the idea of this weekend well this weekend has been booked over 12 months but yeah I thought about this weekend of doing a bit of reflection so still had loads of comments coming in from the Mr Carter video and uh, all good so far. There has been a couple of guys who agreed with Mr Carter and a few guys have said well his way of doing it is okay but you don't understand the actual way the controls work. The idea of my video was to show yes it doesn't show how the controls work the way Mr Carter does it but uh, it also shows that I'm not dangerous and I'm in full control of it. That was the idea of the video. But uh, <laughs> all the comments seem to be uh, wanting to get Mr. Carter. Get Carter? Wasn't that a film? It was, wasn't it? Michael Caine in the 70s. And didn't they reboot it in 2000 with, um, oh, what's it called? Rocky. Sylvester Stallone. Anyway, I think Rosie's found a mate. And uh, well, Rose. But yeah, so this weekend's a bit of reflection, meeting up with Jay and Gwen, 
having a walk around Bomaris. Hopefully we're going to the castle and I can do a video at the castle. And uh, to see whether I want to continue doing these YouTube videos or not. Because uh, can I be bothered with all this aggro when how long it takes to do a video, how long it takes to edit. But the original idea was only for the trainees anyway. So out with the dog this to this morning just for a bit of quiet time and a bit of reflection. My bloody arms are falling off again with this bloody press up challenge. Anyway, so shall we see what the day brings and uh, enjoy this nice warm day? It's warm today. Nice warm day in Bomaris and enjoy what Wales has to offer. And uh, thanks again, guys, for all your fantastic comments. It means so much. It does. It means a lot that you guys care whether I do these videos or not. So that's something I always have in the back of my mind. That there's guys out there who appreciate what I do and the effort I put in and the time it takes. So, shall we get on with the day then? Yeah. Nothing like cheek is there. Yeah. Mum and a little chick, each in a way. Cheeky beggars. I'm pooping on the roof. <laughs> Only in Wales. Now, if you see any of these things hanging around in Wales, it's been put here by the Welsh Football Association and it's to celebrate well, Wales taking part in the Euro 2020. Now there are 26 of these dotted around Wales and they, there is one for every player who was in the squad for the Euro 2020s or 21 because it was this year wasn't it? And this one is for Wayne Hennessy, the goalkeeper. So being an ex-keeper is quite a good thing to find isn't it? So if you do see these scattered around Wales you're supposed to put them on social media and tell everybody that you've seen them. Because on the back of them, here, it tells you all about it. It's even got a QR code here, so you can scan it and it's like a community sticker thing, if you know what they are. It's not stone. <laughs> it's not even fiberglass, I don't think. Looks like a bit of plastic. So if you see these random things in wheels, that's what it is. Wayne Hennessy. Does he play for Crystal Palace? Do you know Wayne Hennessy's famous? Because he kept the most consecutive clean sheets when he played for Stockport County, which is right near where I live. So, uh, anyway. Now, it wouldn't be a Tomcat video without a bit of flu twitching, would it? Look at this one here. Worcester flu. How dodgy is that? Because it's right on a main road. I've seen loads of flus around here, Ron. Who's looking in Bomaris for dodgy flus? Me, the dodgy flu police. So, uh, yeah. no terminal guard, right on a road, no flu kit. And here's flu number two. Look at that. It's not seven foot, is it? Also, another path. Plenty of white showing. But it is. I lost the flu, so we can have white showing. But lots of do terminal guards in Wales. Or think about traffic going through. Anyway. It's happened. I found one. What's right? Flu's right. It's got a terminal guard. It's pointing upwards. It's another Worcester flu, but. Condensate pipe. Insulations fell off it. At least they tried. They nearly got it right. And that's the end of Saturday, our first full day 
on uh, this great place of Bomaris. Just finishing off again on the seafront after we've had another lovely tea with uh, Puffin Island just behind us. Not really done much today. We kind of chilled out, a bit of contemplation about things, what's going on in the world, watched a bit of cricket. Can't believe what happened in the England game the other day. Why are people just so stupid? Anyway, let's hope uh, they come down hard on the fans who did those awful chants. Anyway, so more time for chilling out on the front because it's a beautiful evening. Wind's got up a little bit, so hopefully it's not ruined the sound. And uh, that's the end of today, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Now then, what we're going to do is we're going to show you what a lunatic this dog is. Let me take her out. First thing is, she knows she's going out. You need to put this on. So, are you ready, Rosie? Get your harness on. Ready? Come on then. Get your leg in. We got it. No. Let's just get the head. Turn this on. You ready for the lead? Morning everyone, what an absolutely beautiful Sunday morning, sun's up, shining away, castle in the background, no wind, absolutely beautiful, and again, stupid Mo, it's done a business, right when I start doing the filming, so I've got to go and find that now. So, like I was saying, what an absolutely beautiful morning. A big flock of Canadian geese had just gone over. And they were as noisy as hell. Anyway, what a great day. So, the messages keep coming thick and fast for my Mr. Carter video. I've had that over 5,800 views on it and over 170 comments. Most of them good. I think there's been about 370 odd likes and five not likes. So quite a bit of a good video for me for comments and likes and everything. So, uh, but it's a shame it was on a trainer because yes, he is a trainer assessor um, trying to shoot me down, but Let's guess this is life. So on reflection, what am I going to do with YouTube? Am I going to continue with it? Well, I love doing these vlog type videos, but nobody seems to watch them. I don't even get a thousand views on my vlog channel, or my vlog um, videos. So they're not really worth me doing, only it's for me and the family to look back on. So I don't do them for views anyway. But uh, I've also got some running race going on in the background around the ca uh, castle. So I uh, don't know what that is, but there you go. There's a running race going on. Anyway, I'm waffling. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to scale back my videos. I'm not going to push to get two videos done in a week with my teaching schedule and assessing schedule and everything. It's been really difficult. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've come to the conclusion of while we've been reflecting here in Bar Morris. 
from Wales. So, I don't know what we're going to do today. We were still talking about going to the castle. We're doing a bit of filming there and just chilling out because it's such a beautiful day. Stunning. So, uh, let's get on with the day and see what it brings because my arms are still dropping off <laughs> for this press-up challenge. So I'm doing 110 press-ups a day for 30 days. So, uh, yeah. But let's finish off taking a little Rosie out and uh, we'll get on with the day. See you in a bit. So we've decided to have a little trip out to Red Wharf Bay, which is about 18, 20 minutes away. So let's get on with it. Have you ever wondered where Red Wharf Bay gets its name from? Well, actually, it's a mixture between English and Welsh words. The red comes from the battle between the Welsh and the Viking invaders way back in 1170 where the beach was left red with blood so the Welsh used to call it Red Beach but then when the English came along because it was a wharf and a good port they then changed it to Red Wharf Bay found another great vehicle for Tomcat while we're in Red Wharf Bay what about that one Tom? So you're driving around in that Tomcat on the side. Cool old car, well, made to look like an old car. Someone's just said to me, watch out for that car. What car? I don't see a car, I just see a load of grass. Random <laughs> covering your car in artificial turf. It's a new one on me. So look at that, what a beautiful scenery. So we've had random cars. We've also got random signage. No shooting. Would you come here shooting? No oh, fishing. Yeah, no shooting. Anyway, what a beautiful spot. I think this guy's caught a boat. Or a trailer anyway. <laughs> Did you also know Red Wharf Bay was famous for the birth of the Land Rover car? <laughs> Maurice Wilkes, who was born in 1904, became Rover Chief Engineer in 1930. And then after the war in 1947, because he used to drive around in an old Willys Jeep, he actually designed the new Land Rover on the beach here at Red Dwarf Bay by drawing his original drawings in the sand with his brother Spencer. The original Land Rover was revealed to the world at the Amsterdam Motor Show on the 30th of April 1948. So it didn't take him long from designing it to getting it into production did it? Now I've been promising it all video so let's finally take a look at Bomaris Castle. So, Bomaris Castle is famous as the greatest castle which was never built. It was the last of the royal strongholds created by Edward I in Wales, and perhaps it is his masterpiece. Edward and his architect James of St George took full advantage of a blank canvas besides the Menine Strait. By now, they'd already constructed the great castles of Conway, Carnarvon and Harlock. This was to be their crowning glory the castle to end all castles. Plans were probably first made to construct the castle in 1284, 
but this was delayed due to lack of funds and work only began in 1295. The result was a fortress of immense size and nearly perfect symmetry. No fewer than four concentric rings of formidable defences included a water-filled moat with its very own dock. The walls alone bristled with 300 arrow loops. But lack of money and trouble brewing in Scotland meant building work had petered out by the 1320s. The South Gate House and six great towers in the inner ward never reached their intended height. When work finally ceased around 1330, a total of £15,000 had been spent, a huge sum for the period, and the castle remained incomplete. Following the outbreak of the English Civil War in 1642, the castle was held by fortress loyal to Charles I, holding out until 1646 when it surrendered to a parliamentary armies. Despite forming part of the local loyalist rebellion in 1648, the castle fell into ruin around 1660, eventually forming part of a stately home and park in the 19th century. So the distinctive squat shape of Bomaris Castle tells of a dream that never quite came true. Still, it takes a rightful place on the global stage as part of the castle and town walls of Edward I World Heritage Site. And for me, fantastic place to go and see. And so that's the end of our little break to uh, Anglesey and Bomaris. Just watched England demolish Andorra 4-0. Not a good game though, a little of rubbish. Well, at least we won and we're still unbeaten after five games. So, time to take the rag out for the evening stroll again at the seafront. Uh, and then it's back up in the morning and go home. So I finally decided that, like I said before, that I'm just going to be cutting down for a while, maybe to one video a week. Maybe do some more vlogs, got some plumbing exhibitions and stuff to have a go at. It's a nice speedboat speeding down the Menine Straits there. And uh, well, that's it then, unless something drastically happens on the way home, that'll be the end of this vlog. So, if you like this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up, or leave a constructive comment down below. If you're not subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe, because it helps. And again, don't forget to hit that notification bell, because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. And if you're new to the channel, it's Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your amazing comments, guys. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from the man himself soon. See you later, guys. Cheers.